Hallelujah. Despite what we have faced this morning, I want us to give a clap of praise to Jesus. I say give a clap of praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, Nay, in all these things we are more than... Yes, don't mind the devil. He was just trying to distract you from your miracle. Amen. So we apologize for the technical glitch. Of course, you know this is not our facility, so um, it's not something that was detected ahead of time. And you know, every problem that comes your way sometimes just reminds you um, that there is still room for expansion. Are you hearing me? Uh -huh. So we trust God that very soon we'll have our own place. Say amen to that. You know, if you must do the work of the kingdom, you must be ready for moments of discouragement. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Okay? Um, you just learn to be calm in the midst of the storm. And by the time the storm is over, your victory will be sure. In Jesus' name. Please be seated briefly and then we will stand up to pray. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Once more, I want to welcome every one of us to... Uh, March edition of Breakfast Prayer Initiative. Now, for the past two years and counting, we've been holding this uh, meeting once every month. It was a vision that God placed in our heart to gather Christian professionals together and to set up an altar of prayer. Amen. I remember one of those days, I've forgotten which meeting. I think Bishop was, okay, I think it was our worker's service. Bishop was teaching about um, prayers. And he made mention of something that really struck my mind. He said one of the reasons why our brothers from the other side, you know, talking about the Muslims, one of the reasons why you see them dominating is because one of their secrets is in prayers. They pray every day. Okay. So you may say that they pray to a false god or they pray to a wrong god and all of that. But you see, prayer is a demand that God has placed on mankind. Jesus taught us in Luke chapter 18 verse 1 that men ought always to what? Come on, you are not here. That men ought always to what? Pray. And not to men. Alright? And you know that's one of the five pillars of Islam. Prayer. They do it whether they are sick or they are healthy. They do it whether they are broke or they are rich. Somebody is so poor begging for food, but when it's time for prayer, he will go and join them and bow down. And so we believers, we must arise to the responsibility that God has placed on us. The Bible says we are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Okay? So it is our prayers that permit God to move through us in such a way that this earth is preserved. Many of the things that we want to see God do in our lives will be facilitated on the altar of prayers. And let me tell us the truth. The next move of God. Are we here? We are distracted. Please focus on me. Okay? The next move of God in the Christendom is going to be in the marketplace. Are you hearing me? It's not going to be pulpit again. It's not going to be in a church. It's in the marketplace where each and every one of us belongs to. And that's the reason why there is need for us to be equipped spiritually. Beginning from the place of prayer. Okay? So whether there's light or there's no light, whether we have a hall or not, if it means we have to meet under a tree every third Saturday, we will meet and do what? Is it not on the road that they used to pray? They pray anywhere. Is that true? Yes. So, but we now, you need a hall with AC, you need tea at the back, you need breakfast. And no, 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 no. Listen, God wants to move through us and he wants to do it quick. If we must reclaim our territories for Jesus, if we must establish the kingdom of God in the places where he has planted. You, God didn't plant you in that office because of salary. You were surviving before the salary came. 
he planted you there as an arsenal as a weapon as a strategy you yourself your life and your employment in that business in that field is a strategy for the establishment of god's kingdom i want you to hit your chest and say my life my career is god's strategy for kingdom dominion my life my career my business my resources is god's strategy for kingdom dominion did you hear what you just said yes so the next revival is going to be in the marketplace and it's happening very very fast isaiah 28 one scripture and we pray Isaiah 28 verse 5 to 6 We are going to pray the prayer for gates possessing the gates Please let me have my jotter in that Isaiah 28 verse 5 to 6 He said, in that day the Lord of hosts will be for a crown of glory and a diadem of beauty to the remnant of his people. For a spirit of justice to him who sits in judgment. And for strength to those who turn back the battle at... at let's read that last part of verse 6 together at the count of three. One, two, three. And for strength to those who turn back the battle where at the gate now last month i taught you about gates uh, uh, you know briefly before we pray i told you that gates are systems that regulate entry and exit in any place i told you that gates are systems of security where you want to secure a perimeter secure an environment you have to put a gate i told you that gates are also functionaries of authority and influences within a given territory so that they are human principles that have some level of authority and influence planted in certain territory. When we say territory, we are not only talking about your geographical space. Okay? Your line of work is a territory. If you are a carpenter, that carpentry industry and whatever, furniture and upholstery, is a territory. There are people, there are carpenters and there are carpenters. Abi, Even among those who make furniture, there are those who seem to be higher who seem to be more influential than the others these are the people we refer to as gates they have some form of authority and influence over that place that means they can determine what happens or what goes they can determine the laws passed you know there are some laws in the realm of the spirit there are some laws that are um maybe we'll talk about that at the um business conference there are some silent laws that are in place it is not passed into law it is not issued as a decree it, these kinds of laws are called traditional laws people come into the system and just naturally find that others in that system are conforming to that law for instance that every am i wasting your time that every friday the block road when they pray that's a law even though it is not passed into law it is not a decree issued it is not in the constitution but it's what we call traditional law though it is not certified as a law however the inhabitants of that place naturally conform to it it's called tradition now you see that jesus one of the things he quoted the pharisees for was that they held on to the traditions of the fathers as opposed to the commandments of god is that true for instance they came to jesus one day and said why do your disciples not wash their hands before they eat jesus answered this one you are talking is not a law it's not part of the law that god gave moses 
this one is tradition that your father's passed to you you grew up seeing your fathers do it are you hearing me so there are people in systems that can pass silent laws they are called traditional laws it is not part of the constitution of your office but everybody is conformed to it and the day you try to rise against it the people all kinds of blackmail all kinds of resistance and mrs root you are here you have worked in an office where you saw some kind of things so you understand what i'm talking about you have seen she has seen warfare some of you maybe well you know don't worry when you get a job that they are paying you big money that's when you will now see some demons now the demons you are seeing they don't have head and chest they are dwarfs <laughs> when you enter a place where you start making real money the muscular ones who are six foot or seven foot with six packs they will now show up you know since i came back yesterday it's been warfare till today i couldn't sleep because if i sleep it's battle so i have to pray in such a way that i pray till morning i know what the devil is fighting he knows that this guy didn't come back the same but it's a lost battle so you come here and there's network glitch that's why we didn't stream on youtube and there's technical glitch too only god knows the other glitch outside but i'm prepared for all amen so these are laws so these laws are passed by functionaries that have authority or influence in territories they are called gates okay so i spoke to us about gates and um, we talked about negative influences of gates that they can hinder your access they can resist you they can delay your progress all right and we prayed now the bible says in isaiah 28 verse 6 that god will be to those who turn the battle at the gate he will be to them as strength i want us to pray some warfare prayers today that everything that resists the acceleration of your destiny of your career that god will raise a standard against them are you hearing what i'm saying we are going to take the battle to the gate when we say gate of course by now you should understand deeper that we are not just talking about the gate in your house we are talking about systems of authority some of you belong in offices where some people have risen as haman to always challenge you or to always challenge christians or anything that concerns your interest some of you are in businesses you don't know that the reason why you are not prospering may not be because of father house or mother house uh, powers there are also territorial powers not only ancestral powers there are some people who are into furniture making who have fraternized with some spirits that are not of god to starve the prosperity of other furniture makers in that business and then draw it into their own because in the realm of the spirit one of the systems by which satan operates is called robbery or theft the thief commit to steal kill it's not only physical things that satan can steal satan can steal the glory of a thing the worth of a thing look at our naira now i feel ashamed if i give somebody five thousand naira because it really cannot do anything You see, you carry the note minted like that, but there's no the what. Now there are people walking around, even amongst us, in your various profession. You have all the qualification and the skill, but the value, the worth, is not being recognized and exchanged for value. It means that a spirit is at work. Somebody somewhere is doing something that has stolen the glory of your worth. And we must retrieve it today am i making sense to you so that's why we'll take the battle to the gates now we are, we, we are doing this gates part two because last month i had a vision pray for your pastors they go through a lot except the pastor is not serious are you hearing me when you see us stand here let me tell you you don't know the battles we fight you see if you for one soul that is delivered that is healed that is blessed the spirits that have tried to suppress that destiny that you have they will come after you so when jesus casted out seven demons from a lady what do you think the seven demons did 
they went and formed a coalition. Say, okay, since this is the guy casting us out, let's attack him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I had a vision, and in the vision, I saw I was standing at um, the traffic light at uh, the Bornu State Commissioner of Police House. That traffic light facing it as if you are going towards the big roundabout. I stood there, and then right there, I saw a gate. Me, I thought I've seen all the gates in the spirit over this land. Right there, I saw a gate. So you pass there, you say it's a road. There's a gate there. I saw a small gate. And in that gate, I saw a very fierce looking demon. He stood there. And anybody that comes, he will beat that person. Anybody, once you are coming, he will catch you and beat you. So the guy that was before me went there and if I even lifted that one up like this. So I stood and I was looking at, and he was looking at me with the intention that once I deal with this guy, he'll come out deal with you. And then I learned a strategy of warfare that I have not known for years. That is not every battle you fight. That there are battles you, you need to escape. You now see where I, that prayer I raised that day. That I told you people, you people didn't understand. This is it now. So by the spirit I was lifted in the air and I, I marched on him and that guy. I passed and I moved. He instantly he threw the guy and turned towards me. Now there were other people in that line. He left them and turned towards me. But you know in Revelation chapter 12 when that woman was taken to the wilderness, the Bible says when the, when the dragon came against her that she was giving wings to fly. God gave me speed in like a second, I moved from that traffic light to the big roundabout. Less than a second, I was there. So he could not pursue me. So he stood there and was eyeing me. And then I had two other encounters with that same spirit, which I will not tell you about. I will tell you maybe in the days ahead. And God says, confront it. So that morning when I was reading the Bible, I saw this scripture. He said, and I will be strength to those who turn. Some of you, the battle is in your family. There are gates that must be contended with. If not, look at you. You are only, you are the only one rising, and they are pressurizing you. You are settling too many bills. That's the hazard for poverty. And they will do it in such a way that when you go down, rising will become very difficult. Believe me, I know a thing or two about warfare. So you, you are the one helping others. Okay, so let's make sure he keeps helping people. So you, you just feel you are general. But now look at you, you are becoming tired because everybody's and the, the economy is becoming something else. Money is increasing. You pay school fees. You are some of you. You feel like I'm talking to you, right? You this one. You send this one. The weight is just on you. There are gates that you must take the battle to. Are you ready to pray? Stand on your feet. Let's use the next ten minutes to pray. Are you ready to pray? Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. No, you can sound better. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I receive strength. I receive strength. I receive strength. I receive strength. I receive empowerment. I receive empowerment. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. To confront. To confront. Every gate. Every gate. That stands against. That stands against. My destiny, my destiny, my rising, my rising. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Reshe krepa tala, reshe krete kila prala. La prata krete kroto kozo prati. Rete prete krete barata, rete te prada di palate kata. Zete prete prete keti palata. Zete proto to proto to pro. Sha prata prata de la kata kura kadi paragata. Zete prete ke paragata. Arisus tre. Name we pray. Amen. We are going to pray a few prayers and then by 10 we'll be done.
The Bible says in Acts chapter 12 that when Peter was released from prison, you know when he was arrested by Herod, he was put in chain with four soldiers and then there were four other soldiers at the door waiting, you know, guarding the, 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 the prison. The angel came, took him out of that place and the, the prison cell doors opened. The Bible says when they got to the city, the iron gate, that's how he puts it, the iron gate. Now, most times that the word iron is used, especially in the Old Testament, it's always used to connote resistance by evil forces or resistance by the adversaries. You remember that in uh, um, Daniel chapter, where did Daniel see that stature? That the head was made of gold, silver. Bible people talk now, even Bible, now, I don't know again. Don't worry, I'm just joking. Is this Daniel chapter 2? And he said the foot was made of both uh, iron and some parts with clay and that represented the rising of the roman army the legion that came and conquered jerusalem so every time iron is used in scripture most times it refers or connotes um, attack of evil forces are you hearing me that's why i say he has broken the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron the Bible says that that iron gate opened to them of it, of his own. Huh? If you read it, that Acts chapter 12, you read it in King James translation, that particular verse, the Bible used the article his for a gate. You should have used it, not his for a gate. Did you see it there? Ah, I wish you were fast enough. But we are going to pray. Every gate that has remained closed perpetually and is blocking your acceleration in your career is blocking your acceleration in destiny i want you to command that gate to open right now lift your voice and pray pray like you have received understanding the Bible says in Psalm 24 Lift up your heads All ye gates And be ye lifted up Be everlasting doors That has remained closed My gates My acceleration My rising My progress My ascent Beyond the level, every gate, every iron gate of hell, be opened, 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 be Please try to be fast, okay? We need, we need this. The Bible says it was the gate that leads to the city. Alright? And in another place in Ecclesiastes, the Bible says that the labor of the foolish wearies him. For he knows not how to enter the city. That's because part of his ignorance is that he doesn't know that for you to enter a city, there are gates that you must either contend with or fraternize with. Every system that God has planted you or that God has decided to plant you. Some of you have been trying to look for jobs in some places and it's not working. See, when you keep submitting, you keep attending interviews and all of that and no job opportunity is coming, you are dealing with a gate. You are dealing with a gate. No matter how far I throw, it will hit that wall and bounce back until there's something that gives access are you ready to pray every gate to any system that you have desired to enter and penetrate you are going to command that gate to open huh yes he said when they were past the first and second world that means they passed two gates he said and they came onto the iron gate that led into the city which opened to them of his own accord I will tell you why it opened. And they went out and passed next, next uh, 
and they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed the angel did not leave until they had penetrated that city gate if the angel had left before they got there peter would have been stranded are you ready to pray so as you pray god is going to release angelic counterparts angelic ambassadors some of you have struggled with your strength too much you need angelic backup i like you to pray with me and say in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i decree and declare i decree and declare by the mystery of angelic counterparts by the mystery of angelic counterparts Every gate, every gate to any system, to any system that has refused to open for me, refused to open for me, be open, be open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I like you to turn that to Get over territories, get over cities, get over nations. Be open, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open, be open. I like you to pray. I like you to pray. Get over territories, over organizations, over fields of peace. Get over name we pray prayer we are still praying prayer number three now i believe in second kings chapter six the bible says a, a king called ben haddad besieged samaria a siege is a military tactic surround a city or a territory cut off supplies from them until they become weak and then they surrender the bible says they besieged and there was a famine it could be that there's a benhad that besieging nigeria that there's a famine now there are families that there are Ben Haddads that have besieged them. Nobody rises past a level. Nobody crosses a financial threshold. The last time you tried it, in less than 72 hours, you came right back, your accounts, it just, things just came and took the money away. Are you ready to confront those gates? That's why the Bible says that God will be strength for those who take the battle to the gates. Are you hearing me? Yes, ben Haddad went to the gates, we must go to the gates. I'd like you to pray in the next two minutes and contend with every force that stands over the gates of your family, of your business, of your career, of your finances, of your destiny. In the next two minutes, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you to contend with those kids. Contend with those forces. Let them be arrested. Let them be destroyed. Let them be uprooted. We Every force over your we resist them. We resist them. We resist them.
Sajalabarada. In Jesus' name we pray. This prayer, you are going to hold the hand of somebody and we are going to pray. Listen, we are going to pray against every force that resists the advancement and the rising of Christian professionals in this city and in the north of Nigeria. Are you ready to pray? The prayer time may seem very short. That's because we are out of time, okay? But I want you to exert every energy and I thank God that God has supplied spiritual intelligence to us. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. He said, those who turn the battle at the gate, there are gates over territories. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 1 in verse 18, that four horns appeared. And when the prophet asked, he said, these are the four horns that have spread themselves over Judah so that no one will lift up the head. There's a reason why Christians don't advance in government cycles within a state, within the territory you find certain restrictions on believers. We are going to turn that battle this morning. Are you ready to pray? And when we pray and leave this place, in addition to your prayer, be strategic. That's why I, I, I told you all those stories, to challenge you. Now, your agenda must be about the kingdom. So you must stretch yourself. Some of you will leave this place and go from small scale to medium scale business. Because the agenda now is not just to get food to eat. That's a slavitude life. The Bible says he giveth us freely all things richly to enjoy. But beyond just getting food to eat, why can't you be pregnant with an agenda that can feed people? Very soon as the ministry will be going to visit some of these IDPs. The budget we have is, is I think you, you give me a budget of a million. Some of you are... are, are uh, what's the name of that guy that fed prophets in the cave? Obadiah. That's that's why God has. That's why God wants to raise you. That's why the devil is fighting your going abroad. That's why the devil is fighting your rising in business because God has put in you an initiative that will preserve a generation. Some of you are Josephs. I told you that this year is the year of Josephs. If the guy that will bring the the next deliverer to Margil Land is in an IDP camp, and hunger will kill him there. Because there are no Christians that have the economy of nations that can stand up and feed people. Are you ready to pray? Yes, sir. Oh, you will leave this place angry this morning. We are going to pray. Hold your hands to two. Every force that has sworn to resist the rising and the advancement of Christian professionals. We pull you down. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. We come in partnership with the Holy Ghost. The Bible declares that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise a standard. We 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 are pigs. We resist. We pull down. He said, I've set you this day over kingdoms and nations to pull down and to destroy, to tear down and to put, and then to plant and to build. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The power of God is here. Last night I was praying and God said we should pray for restoration. Everything that the devil has stolen. There are things that you don't even know that were stolen by the devil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are things that you don't know that has been stolen by the devil. Some people, the devil has stolen their time. Their set time. Their appointed time. You see it in your visions that I got this job. But when the time came, the job passed you. It said I will restore to you the years. Yes. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
by the mystery of the blood by the mystery of the blood yes. and by the power of the holy ghost by the power of the holy ghost everything everything that was stolen that was stolen from my life from my life from my family help me the power of god is here from my destiny from my destiny be restored be restored pray in the name of jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost by the power of the Holy Ghost so glorious you are glorious so glorious you are glorious so glorious in your way You are glorious, so glorious. You are glorious, so glorious. You are glorious, so glorious. In your way, in Jesus' name, we pray. I'm going to make some brutal prophetic declarations. And the, listen, while I'm making these declarations over you, the power of God will touch some people. Please try to be your neighbor's keeper because I don't think we have much options. But don't be too distracted not to receive. Are you hearing me? I came back with a strange anointing. Lift your hands. I want to pray with you. First of all, God asked me to declare this last night that in 21 days, beginning from today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I, I bring you into a season of restoration. I declare strange levels of favor and restoration in the next 21 days. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Escapra, lift your hands, hear me. I declare every satanic bank, every demonic warehouse, every satanic laboratory where your seed, your glory, your finance, your resources, your destiny has been stolen and kept. I invade those warehouses, I invade those banks, I invade those laboratories, and I declare restore, 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 restore. Restore, restore, restore in the name of Jesus. Andaramatos kotoko bazaya, semfratos koporoto kosia. Every satanic guardian, every satanic spirit that stands as a guardian over families represented here, seeking to bring restriction. That nobody will rise, that nobody will prosper. Katakos Hokopa. I release the sword of judgment. I cut off those satanic ideas. I cut off those satanic priests. And I declare to you today: rise, 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 rise in the name of Jesus. I see the hand of God coming on three people right now. I see it's, it's an unction for vengeance. I see the hand of God coming on three people right now. It's a grace. God is stepping into your life this season. He said, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. He said, and I will recompense those that trouble you. He said, for it is a righteous thing with God to repay with evil those that trouble you. Every troubler of Israel, every troubler of your house, 
I declare that God will trouble them today. I release destinies. I release careers. I release job opportunities. Job opportunities that have been hanging. I release it. I release promotions. I release promotions. I release promotions. I release promotions. Hear me. I release the full import of God's financial. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The full imports of God's financial blessing over your life. Because you came for this breakfast prayer initiative, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command a restoration. I command a restoration. I command a restoration. A new day has come for you. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. Stretch your hands before you. There are seven people that I see a fresh anointing coming on. Please bring them for me. Bring them for me. I want to touch them. I see seven people. God says a fresh anointing for a new season. Bring them for me. Seven of them. Let the hand of God find you where you are. This is not meant to be an impartation service. But God is taking over. I release that grace. I release that mantle. Seven of you right now. Touch by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them. I'll just touch them. It's a fresh anointing for a new season. It's a fresh anointing. He said, Thou shalt anoint, he said, Thou shalt exalt my horn as the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Take that oil, take that grace, fresh oil of the spirit, fresh oil of the spirit, fresh oil of the spirit, fresh oil. Forever and ever and ever you reign forever and ever help help him Shoroboto Kosiana Lamahaya Forever is a season of the release and ever and ever you reign forever hear me believe it the bible says believe his prophet and you will prosper there's a fresh anointing that has rested on you today you you just go back and you will see the kind of things that will be possible around your life The season of grace. Can I pray for you, sir? It's a season of grace. That's it. That's it. It's a season of grace for you. Grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. In the name of Jesus. My dear, can I pray for you? It's not finance. Put your hand on your womb. Alright? Everything that God has not planted in the name of Jesus be uprooted now. Help her. The power of God is on her. You will not be uprooted. You will not be diagnosed of any evil condition. I flush up every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. How much time do we have left? Or oh, we are we are over. Huh? Is it
it time to close? Is it time to close? My dear, come. Can I pray for you? Come. Something good is going to happen for you and your family this season. Are you hearing me? I want to pray. God said he's breaking the cycle in your family. Amen. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Stretch your hands towards me. I'm going to release an anointing for you and your family. Father, I release a grace upon her. Every satanic cycle that anyone in this family is experiencing. I see patterns. Let it break. Let it break. Let it break. I superimpose on satanic entrenchments. Break in the name of Jesus. And I declare new cycles of blessings, of peace, of grace, and of glory. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It's a new season. Wave your hands and give him praise. In the name of Jesus. We love you and we bless your name. In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next BPI, you will come back with testimonies. Some of you who you are saying the amen, but in your mind you know that you don't have any business with anything coming. I program breakthroughs into your life. Let me give you an understanding of a scripture. That's the scripture we used to start the 30 nights of favor. Make sure you don't miss that prayer. You will hear strange testimonies, I'm telling you. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her, yet the set time. You know, you see that scripture as a prayer, but do you know it's also a decree? And the person that was speaking was the one who created the time for the favor. He said, for the time to favor her, yeah, the appointed time has come. Even if there was no business of God favoring them that season, he said, you will arise now because this is the time of favor. So you can reprogram seasons of favor in your life. Do you know how they make rain in Dubai and in the Middle East? You know, they have scarce, scarcity of rainfall, like us. As I watched the documentary, they will take a plane and fly in the air to a certain altitude. And then they will take, um, is it sodium chloride or something like that? Something like salt, inorganic salt or something. And they will release it. And when the thing collides with the atmosphere, rain will start coming. You call it a desert. They have found a way. This one is not magic. This one is science. And now God has sent me as a prophet to speak and reprogram the climate of your life. And I'm declaring that whether you had no business with any breakthrough, between now and the next BPI, your testimonies will be more than the days. I program seasons of favor, successive seasons of favor, in the name of Jesus. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed today? The Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Because of the time you have spent in the presence of God, God will cause everything to stand still upon your arrival. In the name of Jesus, receive the blessings of the Lord for this weekend. Go and prosper. Go and succeed and be preserved blamelessly to the coming of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. We'll see you um, generally tomorrow. For those of you who come to Pneumatech and then for those of you who come to BPI only, we'll see you next month. God bless you.